Uh, this is Seymour Rocks uh, reporting from Down Under. I just want to report on uh, three or four recent stories which attest to some very alarming and rapid changes in New Zealand society as a result of the uh, the March the 15 uh, massacre in Christchurch, uh, whereby at the very least uh, we can say that this was uh, being exploited by the powers that be, and I'm talking internationally here, uh, to uh, make some changes to New Zealand society that would have been impossible had this uh, attack not taken place. So let's go jump to the first one. This one um, appeared in Stuff, uh, which is either the Christchurch Press or the Wellington uh, Dominion Post, um, and it's entitled Police Seize Gun Collectors' Firearms in Over-the-Top Raid. So I will read this because I think it's quite significant. A community-minded contractor who dug the mass grave for victims of the mosque shootings for free says the police went way over the top in raiding his house to seize his 11 firearms. So we've established, first of all, this is a good uh, upstanding member of the public. The colourful figure who asked not to be named for security reasons, but whose record of helping out people in the community and raising money is known to have endeared him to many, said about 30 police raided his West Christchurch block on April 2nd at about 5pm while he was still at work. Some were armed offenders squad members and others were in ordinary police uniform. A specialist search squad searched his house, outbuildings and a granny flat housing his 80-year-old mother. They even went through her underwear drawer, he said. The worst thing was that they pointed a rifle at my 12-year-old daughter who was picking up horse poo. They asked her to put the fork down and walk towards them. She is still anxious and shaken. The whole family is. Police then rang him at work. He arranged to stand in the middle of the yard and ask the police to leave their guns in their vehicles. They still pointed their guns at me and made me walk towards them with my hands up. I got to them and said, put that away before you hurt yourself. He is now waiting for an explanation. He does not believe police were acting on a tip that he was dangerous. Police refused to comment, citing privacy, despite the man providing a privacy waiver. And the police say, Unfortunately, for privacy reasons, we cannot respond to quest requests which seek to confirm whether specific individuals have made complaints to police or if police have attended a specific address a police spokesperson said. The man said, I've seen them raid the headhunters. Now that's a gang, local gang, the headhunters, with less firepower than they raided us. It's just out of this world, way over the top. Signs of the time. He accepts police might have wanted a chat with him because... After the mosque shootings, he had bought an AR-15 rifle from Gun City. The mosque shooter used an AR-15 class rifle and they are now banned under the new arms legislation. A rush of gun sales was reported in the aftermath to the March 15th mosque shooting after it was announced gun laws were changed. And now... Get this, the AR-15 is among the most popular as a semi-automatic sporting rifles often used for deer, goat and pig hunting as well as competitive target shooting. So this is uh, mainstream media saying it. But all they needed to do was to ring me and say we're coming around for a chat if I was really up to no good, I would have bought the firearms off the internet. Everyone knows that. The contractor said he had a firearms license since 1982 and had been shooting as a sport since he was 12. 
He collected firearms and had two other AR-15 rifles before the shooting. When he bought the firearm, he thought he would be able to keep the gun under a grandfather arrangement where those who earned the, owned the guns before the law change would be allowed to keep them. It would have told a story. His confidence in the police has gone down to about zero, he said. All his guns were confiscated in the raid and he is now trying to get them back. This didn't need to happen. I'm not a criminal. They could have made a few other checks and seen that I was not a risk. He had two assault convictions from 35 years ago and has been out of trouble since. And then separately, an Ashburton farm manager, who also declined to be named, told Stuff he was also angry about the way he was treated by the police. He was in his garage searching through his deep freezer shortly after eating lunch on Thursday when his wife said that there were some police officers coming up the drive. There were about three armed police that came out from the back of my section and three more units pulled up at the driveway. Of the 14 police officers, eight were, quote, heavily armed. The officers wanted to speak to him about the terror attacks, his views on the police, Muslims and other religions. He was then asked if anyone was at home. I said, no, my kids are at school. And then they sent a team in to clear the house like in the movies, going into each room, guns pointing, clearing the house. The man said the officers told him the hour-long visit was initiated in part because he had purchased an A category AR-15 from Gun City a day after the March 15th attack. His gun, which was being held in a secure safe, was seized along with some other items, including a scope and an ammunition. He told Stuff he travelled from Ashburton to Christchurch after the attack to buy the gun because he had always wanted one. His wife was planning on buying him one for his birthday in June and was worried that they would become harder to buy. It was probably the wrong decision, but I thought that if I don't get one now, I might miss the opportunity. He said he was not racist or anti-Islamic. I said, so I'm not a fan, but I understand that there are good people out there. There are good Muslims. I'm not a fan of the religion, but I'm not going to go out and shoot people, kill people. He said the number of police officers was over the top and believed a call or visit from a local police officer would have been enough. I can't understand why they needed that many armed police to come in here and ask me my views on this and seize my gun. Well, we've seen that on numerous occasions. So let's just go to this other one. Um, and this one came uh, through uh, Facebook. And so the reporting is a little bit more uh, emotional. Uh, it comes through Facebook. This is appalling. We were contacted by a reader who was just raided by 14 armed, heavily armed police and a dog unit. His crime, he purchased an AR-15 sometime after the Christchurch attack. I don't know if this is the same person. That's it. He was getting one for his birthday in a few months' time from his wife. Now, it sounds like the one, actually, that was uh, being discussed in that previous article, the second person from Ashburton. Didn't want to miss out on the uncertainty, so purchased early. The police first raided another home, believing it to be his. It wasn't. It was his workers. They seized his phone and showed him the careful plans they had formulated to raid the incorrect dwelling. Then they found a reader's residence on the same property, uh, then performed a full tactical search and seized his AR after separating them from his wife. Then police asked his view on Islam, etc. Did he like Jacinda? Then they left him with his license and several other gu then they left him with his license and several other guns because he was never a threat. He was told not to expect to get what he paid for the seized rifle. Is that right? He was told that there was no compensation for the ammo he could give that away. 
A special storage case was his loss as well, useless for other rifles. We have advised the gentleman involved to make a complaint with the, uh, that's the police uh, uh, complaints authority, who um, usually that's just the police uh, investigating themselves and uh, finding themselves blameless. Here's a tip for any police reading this. If you contact a raid, conduct a raid of a citizen terrorizing his family with over a dozen armed police in several vehicles, and the end result is simply you're saying uh, goodbye, then you are I. Yeah. You need to ask yourself is this why you became a policeman? Who are you serving? This man's only gang connection was the 6,000 cows he manages. The gun seized was for pest control and destruction of injured stock. No, this might be a separate story. No inciting incident, no criminal record, no flag on his name to suggest his family would ever be a problem, but he is a vetted shooter. So, F that guy. That is New Zealand now. And um, after being following this, um, I can only uh, concur. I think my views on guns and guns owners was quite different just uh, a few short weeks ago from what it is now. Um, and then this, I'll just point your attention to this, um, another indication. Chinese police officers set for training and information sharing in New Zealand. Well, what the hell are Chinese police coming to New Zealand for? The Chinese police force is coming to New Zealand, but its officers will not be patrolling a street near you. Despite fears about the arrival of Chinese te telecommunications giant Huawei um, entering Western democracies, uh, New Zealand police have opened their arms to a notably political police force saying there's nothing to fear. So we've got that. And then in the meantime, uh, this is happening um, right now as we speak, and there'll be more on this. Prime Minister en route to Paris for Christchurch call meeting. The Prime Minister heads to Paris tomorrow to meet the French President. This is the guy who gets his police to shoot out his own citizens' eyes every Saturday, and this Saturday was no exception and to seek ways to stop social media being used to promote and organise terrorism. Well, the only terrorism, mate, is from the state itself. So I won't read this. I'll leave the description below. Uh, this is an ongoing story. So um, that's enough from me. Um, this is Seymour Rocks reporting from Down Under.